Hi, this is Bill coming to you in spring 2021 uh, with a little announcement before the, this video starts. Uh, I made this video in fall 2020, and in fall 2020, we were trying to implement a rule called overflow auto. You can see that in our section left and section right. That was not working and working all that well. Uh, so I have removed it from the work that we're going to be doing in spring 2021 and moving forward. We won't be implementing that as well. We'll be using it a different way. Uh, with our floats. So please ignore all references to and discussions of overflow auto uh, in this video and in any document that you see on the screen. Our current documents do not have it. You will not be needing it uh, for the work that we're going to be doing. All right. Thanks for understanding that. I just have not had time to remake the videos over again. So please just ignore that overflow auto and you'll be all set. Uh, looking forward to seeing all your work. And now back to your regularly scheduled. This video is going to follow up on the video where we talked about positioning uh, elements using classes and IDs and floats. And you'll recall that we are trying to position uh, one of our portfolio items and associated content on the left side of the screen and the other one on the right side of the screen. Uh, so please, if you have not, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have not watched uh, that video first, please make sure you do because that goes over the concepts that we'll be covering uh, in this video. You will also need to have open the Word document that I provided in the assignment for today that is also on the coding page. Um, I'd like you to have your web page open, of course, FileZilla, as well as brackets. You will need open your portfolio.html and your main.css. Now, I apologize if you hear some hammering or drilling or sawing in the background. I'm having some work done in the house today, and I had hoped to get this video done early, early this morning, uh, but I was not able to, so... Uh, this is the only time today I really have to do this, so I apologize uh, if you hear any of that. Hopefully it won't be too much of a nuisance. All right. Um, so as I said, we're going to be positioning our portfolio items on the left and on the right with the associated content on the left and on the right. The way we are going to be doing that is we're going to be applying... Uh, classes to our section properties. We're going to add the left and a right class to our section properties. And we're going to do the same thing in our HTML. Right. So let's go ahead and get started. And <clears throat> we are going to follow along uh, with this document. And the way I'd like you to go ahead and do this is to uh, complete each step along the way. I'll talk about one thing, press pause on the video, and then continue on uh, as you are, as you're going. While we are doing this, we are going to be preparing uh, parts of our CSS and HTML documents for responsive uh, coding and design. We're going to be getting that to that in detail in a few weeks. Essentially, in a responsive design, you are coding your page so that it will display, display, <laughs> properly regardless of the screen size. Uh, in order to do that, we need to ensure that we don't have hard pixelized widths. Pixelized widths are static. They are not flexible or responsive. So we are going to be in making sure our widths are going to be using percentages. Um, and since we uh, already have heights and widths, hard heights and widths in our image code, we're going to have to remove those, and we're going to be using the style sheet from now on to style our uh, image sizes. All right. And so this first step in this document is to remove all heights and widths from images. So you'll have only uh, the alt text, the title text, and the IMG SRC. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up our portfolio.html. We'll scroll down to where all of our images are. <laughs> And you'll see that I have this height and width, and I'm just going to remove that. And again, um, we are doing this so that we can control the widths of the images using CSS. And then uh, the 
aspect ratio will automatically uh, work. Uh, it will just dynamically show the corresponding correct height uh, for whatever width the, the image is placed inside. And it's going to do that based on how we are, are coding. Okay. So I'm going to press Save. I'm not going to upload just yet because I really haven't made any changes that I'm going to represent. Um, but that's just the first step. And again, we're doing that so that it is, uh, so the images will become uh, responsive. Okay, let's see what's next. The next thing on the sheet is I have a, basically a sample of the HTML uh, that you are going to wind up with. Now you've already coded all of this, and, and uh, if I've looked at it and we've talked about it, then it's coded correctly. And so you don't need to copy and paste this. I just want you to make sure that you're seeing something similar on your pages. Now, if you have a little bit different, that's okay. Uh, you just want to make sure that your headers and your figures and everything are set up. The main thing is that we need to start with is we're going to be adding this class to the section element. Uh, you don't yet have this on your page. And if you recall, we want to make sure that we have this section will be on the left. So we're going to start uh, with this, and then the other section will be on the right. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll see section left, section right. And let's go on over to our code. And I'm going to find my first portfolio section here. And I'm going to go class equals left. Just like that. And then I'm going to scroll down to class equals right. You want to make sure that you have your quotation marks and you have your equal sign. There's no spaces. Everything is all lowercase. Now, if you do not have this uh, commented out text, please add that in. Uh, it can just say end left or however you want it. Um, I'm going to actually change this to end left because this is, I like to name it the same as my class name so I know where that class ends. So end left. And I'm going to name this other one end right. Save. Now again, I'm not going to upload just yet because we haven't made any changes to the styling. Adding these classes into the browse, into the code, uh, won't have any effect on the layout until we start adding in the styles. So let's see what's next on our document. So I've added all that. And everything else, you should have something uh, similar in there. Uh, okay. So the first thing in my CSS is I'm going to make sure that your page is styled so margin auto will center the boxes. You'll recall from another video that we need to um, add this text align center so that our boxes that we have on the page are centered. And we just want to make sure that everything is doing that. And this is particularly important for our images as we get down to styling that. So let's just take a look and see. In the CSS, and that's all the way up at the top, and I do see my HTML text align center. Now, you should also have this in here for the styling of the border box to make sure your boxes show up properly. If you do not, please make sure you see those box videos uh, from the prior class or last week, whenever they are uh, appearing. Okay, so that's already there, so we don't have to do anything in any changes. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to style or add the left and right divisions. And I'm going to just copy and paste that. And I'm going to put that right directly underneath the body tag. I do this because I like to have my structural elements at the top of my CSS and my textual elements going down lower in my CSS. It just helps me remember where things are. This is an example of not necessarily clean coding, but effective coding and effective communication because you're communicating with a future version of yourself uh, so that you'll know where everything is. Now let's break down what we have uh, on this page. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 
section dot left. And we know that this dot corresponds to the word class in the HTML. So in the HTML, the word class corresponds to the dot in our CSS. And you'll notice how I have written this, section dot left, no spaces here. And that's very important that you're not putting any spaces in. All lowercase, again, that's very important too. I'm calling it left because I am floating to the left. And we want to make sure that our names for our classes correspond to what the element is doing. So they're semantic, they're meaningful. I'm not going to name this section dot tree if I'm just floating something to the left. I could name a class tree if what's going to be in the class is a tree, uh, but we want to make it meaningful. So float left, okay? With 48%. I'm going to remove, okay? With is 48%. And we're going to make it 48% because as we recall, uh, we want it to be on the left half of the screen. And 48% is a little less than half of 100%. And that extra percentages between the two 48% widths will give us a little bit of spacing between it. And 48 is just a starting point. You can change that uh, if you if you want to. Okay, that's certainly up to you. Now there is something else to explain about floats before we move forward, and I want to apologize because I'm jumping in here with a new section to this video that I'm adding in spring 2021, um, when the original video was made in fall 2020. So what you're going to see now for all the post fall 2020 students is what your handout looks like currently. Uh, the older ones uh, looked a little bit different. Um, so I apologize for, for adding this uh, addition, and I hope that doesn't add confusion. You'll notice that what is missing from these is that overflow auto, uh, which, excuse me, we had tried last semester to use, but was not really working as intended, so I've taken it out. You will notice um, this line of code that is now on your sheets called the div class clear. And it says in the comments, necessary after the last floated element, so content will appear below it properly. And this is something that is important for understanding what floats are doing. Um, when you create floated elements and you place them next to each other, such as we're doing with left and right, it appears, or you th would think that it would appear, that stuff would normally just appear next to each other as they are over here. Um, and, and, but what happens is um, the browser doesn't really recognize that the floated elements are there. Imagine something floating up above the ground, okay, floating, and it's just sort of hovering there. And that's what the floats are doing they're sort of just sort of hovering, or the browser understands them, just sort of hovering up above the page like this. And if you don't convince the browser that there is actually content there, stuff will slide up underneath it. Anything that you code after the floated elements will slide up underneath it, and the floated element stuff will appear on top of it. Just like if you've got something floating at the top of the water, right, and resting on the surface. All the little fishies and stuff swim underneath it just fine. Um, but what we need to do is we need to convince the browser that there are elements there. The H3, the figure, the paragraph, all this stuff is actually there so that it will appear properly the way that you want it to. Um, and the stuff below it will continue up to appear below it and not go underneath it. And that is what this uh, excuse me, wrong document. This div class clear does already for you. Okay, it um, convinces the browser that those th elements are there and that the code should just continue on below as you're going along. So what I need you to do is I need you to copy this code from here. Go over to your uh, portfolio.html and paste that in 
underneath the, the last closing section ending your right floated element. So, and on your main.css, you already have that clear as part of your template. And if you don't see it there, you can add this in. This is the CSS that controls the clear division that you have just created. This dot corresponds to the um, class, and then we've made it clear. And clear both is the rule that basically tells the browser what to do. It's a little confusing, I understand that. But the main point and the main rule that you need to remember, and write this down somewhere uh, because it's going to come up again as we are constantly floating elements right and left, is that you always need your clear after your last floated element in a row. Okay, so we have a left and a right and a clear. Left, right, clear. Left, right, clear. That's how it always works. Left, right, clear. Left, right, clear. Now, eventually we are going to be floating multiple elements next to each other. Three, four, five, six. Now you can fly many, depending on how many you want. But after that right floated one, or that last one that's there, you always need to have a clear uh, so you can move down to the next, the next row. Okay. Um, this ends the addition to this video. The video will now continue on <laughs> with the older one. Uh, so I'm going to save this. And I'm actually going to go and upload now. Main.css. Oops, it's reconnecting. Styles. Portfolio. Portfolio. Good. There we go. All right. So now, based on what we have done so far, I should expect that the this red line creek and fog and associated image and and the list will appear on the left and duck creek river march and image and and list will appear on the right now i'm going to do the hard refresh um which i think was a shift command r and there it is it's on the left and on the right but that's weird look at this my image is totally still too wide, even though I have removed my heights and widths, right? And the reason is no heights and widths in there at all. The reason with is I haven't told the image in the style sheet uh, how to behave yet. It's just sort of sitting here. And this is the size, these are the sizes of my image if I do view image. We'll be able to see it's pretty much that size. Now your images might be gigantic, and that's okay. We're going to do a little styling right now to fix that all up. Let's go ahead and see what that is. So you'll see that next on the list, then style your image so it will be in the middle of the divisions you create. Style the width to your tastes. Okay, so here we are styling our figure. And you'll recall last week when we were doing HTML5, I said eventually we're going to be styling the figure on our page. So I'm going to do that. The copy, I'm going to style my figure. And I'm going to go back to my style sheet. And I'm going to put this right over here after the section. Pop it in there. Style it with 80% margin auto. We know that margin auto centers things on the page. Uh, this width of 80% is going to make this figure 80% of the section size. You will call from our understanding of, of uh, widths that it's always relative to the box uh, that is inside of. So here, my section is 48% of the screen, okay? But when I'm styling my figure and I'm making this 80%, it is 80% of this box here. It's not 80% of the entire screen size. And that's because this is sitting inside of the other figure is sitting inside of section. Okay. So we have to add that styling in and the margin auto uh, positions it. 
Now again, this is a, a, a default width. You don't have to keep it that width. You can change it, make it bigger, smaller, however you want. Uh, I just like you to try to implement some sort of width uh, at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. So now let's go back to our Word. I'm not going to upload yet because we're not really done with our uh, image at the moment. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, Word document and um, you'll see the then style the image, adjust the border, background and padding, styling to your taste. Now the key here is this max width 100%. What this does is it forces the image to only, I'm sorry, it forces the image to take up the entire width of the figure and be the exact size that it needs to be. In other words, it will no longer override the box, right? It will sit there inside of it and be that size. So the maximum width that that image will be is going to be 100% of the box that it is sitting inside of. And that's what that max width element is. It's a very powerful element because it forces things uh, to be that that's size that you want them to be. Um, even if the image is gigantic, <clears throat> it will still shrink down to fit inside the box uh, that you want. So let's copy that. And I've already got some stuff for my image. So I don't need to copy the whole thing. Um, I'm just going to pop that max width in there. There's a background. You'll see there's a background color. My background color is already white, so I don't need to pop that in there either. Uh, you can change this to be whatever it is that you want, of course. Um, all right. So now I have a figure width of 80%. And that is this box here. It's 80% of the section box. And now what I'm doing is I'm forcing my image to fill the entire box here. Okay. And not go over. It's going to fit neatly in there. The width will snap into place, and the height will automatically correspond correctly to that width. Um, so you won't have to do any calculations anymore about any of that. It will automatically uh, appear the right height that it needs to be. Right, let's make sure I've saved everything. I did not. So I'm going to save. I'm going to go back to FileZilla, refresh. Upload my portfolio. I don't think I made a change to it, but just in case I did. Styles, files, name. I'm going to go back. And if everything is working properly, I should see that these two images are going to snap directly into place. Again, I'm going to do my hard refresh, and I'd like you to get used to doing that. Uh, Shift Command R on, and on the Mac. Boom. And there it is. Uh, appearing exactly as we want it to. Two images side by side. You can see how lo this looks just like that. Two images side by side with a header and some content underneath. Two images side by side with a header and some content underneath. Now, you can make certain changes now to this if you don't like the way it looks. So let's say I want to go in and to my CSS and my H3. Right now I have text align left. I want that maybe in the middle, center. Let's give myself a little margin bottom. Let's say 5px, just a little bit of extra space. Um, and then I also want my figure to be, let's say 98% of the width. I don't, the 80% might be a little too small for my tastes uh, right now. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to also drop this down to 2 em, Do my math, 32, and refresh. Now we have the name is centered and the pictures are bigger than they were before. And just to show you what that box is, this, the section box, I'm going to just draw a border here for you very quickly. Um, 
Um, let's make it uh, make it a little gray color. And I'll do one on the left and on this down on the right. Do, do, do. Okay, so you can see this is the section box around here. This is the figure is taking up 98% of the section. And the image is stretching to fill that 98% completely. Uh, and if I change the percentage of this figure back to, let's say I want to make it 60, I'll make it really small so you can see the difference. You can see how tiny that is right there. Uh, that's definitely 60%. Um, don't really like that. You can see this one shrunk down also. Now, if I didn't want this one to shrink down, if I wanted this one to stay small and that one to stay big, I could style that actually if I wanted to. Um, I can make this figure dot small. And then I'll make a figure large. I don't know why it does that. Ninety eight percent margin auto, so we can line the middle. Okay. So now that I've had the figure dot small and the figure dot large, I have to add them to the portfolio as well. Uh, this is the First one, class equals small, class equals large. And this is how you create unique elements on your page by adding these classes. Now, if I knew that this was going to be only the only time I use large and small, I could have made these IDs. And that would have been appropriate, but I might use them again. You never know. So let's go upload. Phone is ringing downstairs. And there we have it. Now this looks terrible, <laughs> but this is just giving you an idea of how things can uh, actually work. So I'm going to go ahead and take this all out. Uh, I'll do that on my own. Um, but good luck getting this done. If you have questions, please let me know. Uh, first, email the people in your coding group uh, and see if they can help you with those questions. Uh, but if then not, either bring them to class, because we'll be working on this in class a little bit, uh, just to go through your troubleshooting and ask questions. Or if you want to just shoot me an email too, that'll be fine. Otherwise, have a great day. I'll see you later.